Hello! I have mentioned in my previous video that I would release a version of that video trying to explain in simple terms how this method works. This is, by, this is by no means meant to be a comprehensive video, rather an introduction to how the method works and how it compares to the usual polynomial division. If you are a hardcore mathematician or maybe a math enthusiast who is not scared of Greek letters and is familiar with their functions, then you'll find a link to a marvelous paper that discusses the generalization of this method extended further than the usual degree 1 polynomial division. If you're only interested in the method itself, then um, I urge you to watch the other video and ignore this one. Hopefully I'll be able to convince you that this method is indeed a perfect substitute for the usual polynomial division and that by using it you might be able to, you know, save yourself some time. I'll uh, start with an example, a long one, possibly not, not this one, this one was too easy a long example of this long polynomial division and this will take a while to do so I'll make a time lapse of it This is indeed in agreement with the previous result and indeed I'll show you that this is indeed the correct solution. Uh, for those of you who can't see it, these two are just swapped around here. So here we have the solution of, uh, of our question here. We have f of x here and we have factorized it um, just down here. Uh, so what we see is obviously our function here and um, yeah, let's confirm that it is indeed the same thing. And as you can see, um, the two functions are indeed the same. And therefore, um, yeah, the exercise is complete and correct. For those of you who have seen the other video, you may realize that in this video I have not performed the division. Instead, I have simply factorized. Uh, but they are very much related things, and I'll show you why. So in the previous video, I have had an f of x, g of x divided by some kind of factor. So if we look at, at the previous video, then I had a certain function, and I divided it by another function here. Um, and then the result, obviously, was here, a certain function plus the remainder divided by our initial uh, divisor here. And if you factorize, you actually obtain this at the top, right? So you have q of x um, multiplied by h of x and you get this function here. So what you can see is that the initial function here can be factorized into something like this. And it is indeed what we have found here in this video that g of x can be factorized in terms uh, of q of x, h of x plus a remainder. Um, I don't think we had a remainder in our video. Uh, that's right. Uh, so if, if you get remainder, then that's what comes out here. So how does this work? Well, it is actually no different from what long polynomial division does. 
In fact, you can see it is, you know, you can see right there, here, that if you multiply the term by minus 1, so here, by minus 1, it becomes minus 2, sorry, uh, so plus 2 becomes minus 2, and in turn you add here, instead of subtracting, like here, then you get the same thing. And instead of keeping, you know, keeping um, tabs on how many x's and blah 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 there are, you can just ignore them and use this method instead where you don't have to faff about with all those things. Um, essentially, you have multiplied by minus 1 and instead of subtracting you are indeed adding. And that that's how the method works. It's, it's, not, it's not anything revolutionary, it's just for lazy people who don't want to fight out every single x. People will tell you that this method only works for degree 1 polynomial division. Well, you can prove them wrong by following the link in the description below to a maths paper that discusses this method much more in depth, so it discusses polynomial division at a higher degree. I hope you find this video convincing, maybe mildly entertaining, and I'll see you next time.